Criticizing Black Lives Matter movement is hate speech, according to Global Glo- Global Golden Globe's jurist, Editor's Choice Report. This is in keeping with the, the last story that we did on the show. And if you're watching this video as a standalone, click on the link in the description below to watch the whole show that this excerpt comes from. And this is, uh, well, I'm calling this for the video version of this, I'm calling this Doc Critical of BLM Deemed Hate Speech by Golden Globe Jurist. And looking at our top link here, we have the editor's pick. This is what this is. This is our, this is really editor's picks, edit, editor's choice report is what it really should say there. So the top story for the editor's choice report is what we're going to talk about here. Golden Globe's juror says bombshell reporting on Black Lives Matter movement is hate speech. That's from this is from the right, the Federalist, and the excerpt here from Gabe Gabe Kaminsky. Thank you, Gabe. There are a few things more disturbing and chilling than when creative types employ censorship and deplatform tactics to restrict speech, expression, and ideas. A man named named Sam, wrote to the general HFPA email Wednesday afternoon, astoundingly, astonishingly, astoundingly, you have done just that, and in in so doing, you have put your illiberal intolerances out out for the world to see. What do you say here? What do you say here? Let's see. Golden Globes juror Patricia Donahue, who is also a member of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, responded to someone who contacted her voicing concerns after the ousting of former FPA President Philip Burke, asserting that reporting on Black Lives Matter co-founder Patricia Coulter's million-dollar housing spree is hate speech. There are a few things more disturbing and chilling than when creative types employ censorship and deplatforming tactics to restrict speech, expression, and ideas. A man named Sam wrote to the General FPA email Wednesday afternoon. Astoundingly, you have done just that, and in so doing, so have you put your illiberal intolerance, prejudice, and intellectual indifference on full display. Be better. Using their own phrase against them, but it doesn't matter because, you see, you can't win a culture war uh, when you're not part of the culture, and you're not. This woman is a fascistic corporate nationalist. She gets her bread and butter from the same corporate nationalists that are that are basically uh, enabling and emboldening a fascist state in China. So while they enable fascism in China, they preach that they're the anti-fascist over in America. And this woman is 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 the face of hate. This is the face of hate. And it's a, another white woman, another white billionaire. I don't know. She's probably not a billionaire, but she's in, she's beholden to him. So I'll, I'll say it in a, a billionaire vassal, a white billionaire woman morally browbeating the pores, we the pores, uh, from her high perch using weapons of charges of racism, bigotry, and hate speech. To silent dissent, and that's that's essentially what this is. She's simply re- re, uh, protecting the the strong arm. This is this is the brute force. This is the street brute force of the corporate nationalists, led by white billionaires. Black Lives Matter, and if you look at Black Lives Matter, I think you'll find as a movement, the people who identify with Black Lives Matter are overwhelmingly white. It's mostly a white movement, started by black people, maybe but pretty much co-opted by white billionaires and the vassals that depend on them. And I think that's all I'll say on that. And some of the other stories for our editor's pick that we'll cover here. And you could go to freedomist.com slash NW and you can see all these reports and you can go into these stories in a lot more detail for yourself. Media futurist Jonathan Beller believes the Matrix is social realism and scrolling social media is slavery. This is from Futurology. And the excerpt, I guess that he meant real uh, realism and not social real. I guess he meant socialist realism and not social real or whatever. There have been a lot, lots of speculation around the seemingly endless potential of social media for various forms of manipulation, including political and social. But they all forget what no advertising e- agency ever got wrong. Social media is decentralized. It's not. Social media is not decentralized. Social media is controlled by corporate nationalists and they intend fully to use their platforms to advance their agendas and they're they're not moralists they're not ethicists they are they're simply creating their own fiefdoms that they wish to present prevent 
from competition in the future, and they'll use any means necessary to do that. And it just so happens that this whole social justice, critical race theory, all this other type of stuff, that it has this 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 moral supremacist construct that allows them to put fear in the hearts and minds of the very poors that they allege to be serving, that, that the poors, we the poors, and if you if you stop working today and you can't survive, then you're one of the poors. I don't care how much money you're making. If you stop working today and you can't survive, you're one of the poors. That's there's other cat, uh, classification to it, but that's one of the basic categories or base, basic classifications. So to that end, I uh, I completely agree with this uh, person. So let's click on the link itself. Media futurist Jonathan Beller believes the Matrix is social realism, and scrolling social media is exploitation. Well, is it slavery here, but exploitation? It is a form of slavery. It is. It absolutely is. It's, it's a it's very, very soft slavery. It's nowhere near what's called chattel slavery. Much more brutal. You, you'd rather soft slavery than chattel slavery. And, and uh, with that in mind, you don't want the soft slavery either. Just because it's not as bad as chattel slavery, it doesn't mean that it's not, not bad in and of itself. And it, it, they are allowed to control narratives, to set orthodox tones by who they ban and what speech they allow. And they don't have to pass laws to do it. They can just decide. This is Woodrow Wilson's dream come true. Woodrow Wilson wanted to end the Constitution, wanted to end the Bill of Rights because it was an impediment to his idea of the hive. In the hive, you have the experts at the top that can make the quick decisions that need to be made on the fly so that you can you can create a world in which you can make sure that the humans, the poors, are made in your image. You're not serving them. You're making them in your image. And there's more headlines here. I'll let you go there uh, and, and read them for yourself.